Hi. It's um, 10.45 p.m. And I want to go home. But I can't go home until I have this conversation with you. Um, it seems like one out of two or three conversations right now in my life is about is about my upcoming retirement and what life's going to be like for Brenda and I and for St. Luke's following February 15th. And to be quite honest with you, I don't have much of a definitive answer for either, whether it be for my life with Brenda afterwards or whether it be St. Luke's life without us. I really don't know. I don't, I don't have a crystal ball as to what it's going to look like. And recently I was in a conversation with uh, Bishop Kirby Untai, our bishop, Northwest Washington Synod Bishop. Kirby's a really good guy, and I hope you get to know him more, uh, that you all have that opportunity. And he'll be involved certainly around the call process here. But nonetheless, we were having a one-on-one -on -one conversation about life after February 15th and about that kind of air of ambivalence that I certainly feel and others do as well about what life apart is going to be like after we've been together almost 28 years. And, and Kirby had something really fascinating to say. He said, he said, you know, Tom, lots of clergy serve their churches and miss them when they leave, but you love St. Luke's. And I had never heard anyone say it quite like that, and that's actually true. That helped explain a lot of what's been going on, certainly in my life. The fact of it is, is that I really love you. I, I love this church. I love what we've been about. I love what we've accomplished. I love the life we share together, how we do worship and how we play and how we pray and how we do so many things. But that gave me pause to try to plumb that a little bit deeper. What did that mean? I guess there's really lots of reasons why people can express love or great affection for one another or even for institutions, for churches. But as I parsed through that, what that really was meant, I, I, I came across something that was just so inordinately helpful, so intuitively and instinctively right on the mark, that fit right along with what Bishop Kirby's comment was to me was all about. And I, and I began to think about our life together over these many, many years. And what came to me, what struck me as so central to my great affection for this place and this ministry that we share, is this notion that if you prohibit failure, you will kill innovation. If you prohibit failure, you will kill innovation. If you kill innovation, you destroy the spirit that inspires people to want to participate and share and be generous and give their lives away. If you prohibit failure. You know, years ago, I tried to suggest to my staff a long time ago that we ought to do something that would be fun every year. We ought to give it a, a, an award, a silly award, something goofy and fun for the year's best mistake. I, I just thought that was a great idea. Of course, I was the only one laughing and smiling. Everyone just looked blank at me in the room. You can kind of picture it, can't you? But it just strikes me that, or it struck me then, that, you know, the ability to hold up our failures and look at them and somehow say, wasn't that a remarkable experience? And what did that lead us to? It's so worthy. It's so important. Finally, the staff kind of dismissed my notion with, well, you can get at least be assured that you'd get the reward, award every year. 
so I laughed with them. I thought, ah, that's pretty funny. Okay, I would be all right with that too. But I want to bring that back to the here and now. I think at the heart of the great affection of I have for this church, this ministry we have in common, is that we have demonstrated a willingness to risk failure. And that willingness to risk failure has inspired people to think creatively and differently. We might call it innovation. In the business world, they would call it innovation. But we in the church might think of it as about thinking creatively about how we would do ministry and how we might think about our life in the world and in our community. It just struck me as one of the things that I am profoundly grateful for. Now, it's curious. It's curious. But somewhat understandable that every time this church has voted to do something that seems beyond our ability to succeed, when we've been willing to risk failure, there has always been some people who have left the church. And I don't want to pick on them, that's not my point. Because that has grieved me every time that has happened. But I get it. It makes sense to me. Can you follow what I'm saying? Because there is much in the world that discourages us from being willing to risk failure. We would say that's poor planning, that's stupid, that's dumb, you don't want to do that. But that's precisely what the gospel is. That's precisely what Jesus calls us to do. Literally, go risk your life. Come on. Are you willing to risk for something big? Are you willing to live for something that you might be asked to die for? No, most of us really, really would rather have a church that kind of plays it safe. A faith that promises us a rose garden or something. I think I heard that in a song somewhere. Anyways. I am grateful. That's This is what I want to say. All that is to say this. I am grateful to be a part, to have been a part of a ministry, a church, with you. A community of people, a church, that enjoys so many things together. From worship, to service, to play, to food, to a glass of good wine, to a multiplicity of programs and ministries that we are about. I'm thankful for so much. But at the heart of it, I want to thank you for being willing to risk failure. Because it has been in that singular willingness to risk that we have found greater innovation or creativity or inspiration or hope, or meaning, or purpose. And I think quite honestly, if there's anything that's inspired people to be generous, it's been that. So we are now one week from Christmas. One week. I guess God was willing to risk a lot. Was willing to risk a lot. That we might find some inspiration for the living of our life and some hope. I don't know if I'll get another one of these done before Christmas. I may try. But if not, Merry Christmas. God loves you. So do I. Keep me in your prayers. Keep St. Luke's in your prayers. And I look forward to our time together. Bye.